next question is questions 44 to 47. And I would say that uh, torque force problems are very common on the GANSAT. They're very common. They like to have these bed or hospital bed or some kind of uh, stretcher problem. And um, so here we have a, a person sitting on a bed and moving um, and, uh, and some questions related to that. So we're going to look at that now. Okay, so these are torque force problems, and they're very, oops, uh, that's not a T, that should be W, and uh, yeah, they're, they're very important to get accustomed to and, and to understand the basics. Um, there are two rules for all torque force problems that allows you to solve them all, and one is called translational equilibrium. Translational equilibrium means that all upward forces equals all downward forces. And um, the second uh, rule that allows you to solve all torque force problems is called rotational equilibrium. And rotational equilibrium means that the sum of clockwise torque forces is equal to the sum of counterclockwise torque forces. So um, the sum of clockwise uh, torque forces equals the sum of uh, counterclockwise torque forces. So. Um, I guess I, I, I think you could, anyway, I think you, you know where these arrows are pointing, so I, I won't, um, won't uh, do that. But, so now clockwise and counterclockwise uh, torque forces. The first thing that you need to do is uh, uh, when you are looking at uh, clockwise and counterclockwise torque forces, you need to be able to find a uh, pivot point. The pivot point is the point about which everything is turning. So um, the pivot point usually is something that you decide uh, where you want to have it, because you could decide any place on the, uh, on the, uh, to choose as your pivot point, but you usually choose something that will become zero and make it easier to solve your problem. But it doesn't matter because here um, Acer gives you the pivot point uh, it says the pivot point is here, so all distances are measured from that pivot point, and um, and we have to remember, of course, the definition of a torque force. Torque force is the force applied times the perpendicular distance from the pivot point. So it's the force applied times perpendicular distance. And so in the first question, which I'm trying to find because I uh, okay. Lost that sheet. Okay, so uh, by equating the appropriate torques, so um, that's code word. By equating the appropriate torques is code word for saying the sum of clockwise is equal to the sum of counterclockwise. That's what it means. So in Figure One, it is found that the magnitude of T must be equal to. So um, now looking at the torque forces in Figure One. Now we're going to look at uh, the clockwise torque forces. I guess uh, to make it easier for you, um, I'm just going to put these arrows on so that you have a sense of what direction these forces are moving. Okay. Uh, now, of course, during the exam, one of the things you have to have a sense of as well is, remember I said that um, the torque force is the uh, force applied times the perpendicular distance from the pivot point. So this uh, over here, this is a perpendicular distance. From here to here is a true perpendicular distance and it's um, 0.6L is what we are given. And it's a perpendicular distance because uh, you can see that the, the weight W let me just type here 0.6L. The weight W is indeed perpendicular um, to the uh, to the uh, plank. 
Whereas if you look at the forces R and T, they are not perpendicular. And therefore, when we deal with R and T, we're going to have to deal with the perpendicular part of R and T. But nonetheless, um, I'm going to just put the distance here, which we, this distance from here to here, which is 0 0.7. zero point seven L which is given. Uh, in, in fact these are all vectors. Uh, R, T, and W are vectors. And um, and and so yes, so we are using them as vectors. So um, we are going to look at the sum of the clockwise torque forces. So what we do is this is our pivot point. It means that this point, you have to use your imagination here for a moment, so hang in there. So this point is the center of a clock. Now we're going to look at any forces, any vectors that are moving in the clockwise direction. Now you know if this is the middle of a clock, a clock moves like this. In, in this direction would be, is what we would be calling clockwise. So how many forces do you see moving in this general direction? There's only one force moving in this direction. It's force W. It's going down, and this is what we call the clockwise direction. The other forces are moving opposite to the clockwise direction. So, sum of clockwise torque forces. We get back to this. So the, 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 the sum will be uh, the force, which is W, um, and we are given W as 420 newtons. So I'm going to, instead of put W, I'm putting 420 newtons uh, times the distance, which is um, 0 0.6L. So there's force times distance, and that's going to be equal the sum of the counterclockwise torque forces. Is anybody lost? Just going to extend this for a little bit. So um, now we're going to have to look at the uh, counterclockwise torque forces. Uh, so we're going in the opposite direction. Now, you have to remember that the, the torque force at the pivot point, any force that is applied at the pivot point, its torque force is zero. Why? It's very simple. Torque force is the force applied times the distance away from the pivot point. So if R is a force at the pivot point, then the torque force for R at this point is zero. So we do not think about R at all. So now we want to find what forces are moving in this general direction, which is what we would say is um, the counterclockwise direction. So we see that there's only one force moving in the counterclockwise direction, and that force is T. But we cannot accept T. <laughs> Because T is a vector going off at an angle, we need the component of T, which is perpendicular um, to this uh, plank. And the, the component of T, which is perpendicular, uh, we would call this the, uh, the vertical component of T. And we are given in the problem that the vertical component of T is alpha T. So we have alpha T times the distance, and that is the counterclockwise. So alpha T times the distance. So I'm going to just uh, spell that out, alpha and then times the distance, which is 
uh, 0.7L. Uh, the first thing um, that I would do is cancel the L's from uh, both sides. I uh, would bring the alpha over uh, to the left side because we're trying to isolate for T. So we're going to have 420 and <clears throat> uh, I'm going to change 0 0.6 over 0 0.7 to 6 over 7. It has the same meaning. And then all of this is divided by alpha, and this is equal to t. So now <clears throat> I just have to find out how many times the seven, the number seven, uh, go into uh, 420. So I know that seven goes into 42. Um, that would be six times. So then I get six times six is 36. So it's 360. Uh, of course, you can do this some other way that's longer, <laughs> but uh, I think this is the most uh, efficient way uh, for you to do it. Divide both sides by 0.7, realize 0.6 over 0.7 is the same as 6 over 7. Find a co common number, and there you have 360 over alpha, which is uh, answer uh, D. To find R in Newton's, you're going to just use the Pythagoras theorem, which you uh, probably last used in uh, grade six. Anyway, so you, you'd have to square the two green lines, and then that would equal r squared at the top. So it means that r squared, I mean r would equal the square root of the square of the two green sides. And because that's true, um, the answer can only be A, because only A has the square root of two sides, um, two squared sides. Um, so uh, the answer is, is A. Now, to, ex to explain it in detail uh, takes uh, a little bit uh, more effort. Uh, first of all, um, you have to recognize that that the horizontal component of R is going to be equal to the horizontal component of T. Because this system is in equilibrium, so it means that all the upward forces equals all the downward forces. All the forces going to the right equal all the forces going to the left. So this uh, green side of R must be equal um, to uh, beta t. And it's beta t because, so let me see if I can draw a little beta here. It's beta t. Of course, the absolute value is beta t, but it's, if beta t is positive, then it would be negative beta t. But it's in the opposite direction. But its absolute value is, is beta t because it, it opposes the other force. And then to find uh, the force which is over here, this force here, remember all the upward forces have to equal all the downward forces. Now this force is clearly uh, moving upward. Okay, this force is upward because this is a vector addition. And so we have the upward T force the upward R force is equal to the downward W force. Upward R plus upward T is equal to downward W. Now the, the T um, force going up is alpha T. So we have W, which is 420. This I'll have to type. So we would have 420 uh, minus alpha t.
Now, r is going to be equal to, uh, r squared is going to be equal to beta squared t squared plus 420 minus alpha t squared. And so r alone will be the square root of all of that. So it's only uh, the Pythagorean theorem that's being applied here. Question 47. Here is the spine's pivot over here. And the person is now apparently sitting here and holding 280 newtons. Now we already know what their upper body weight is. It's 420. They are now sitting here with 280 more newtons. So that's 420 plus 280. That's 700 newtons. And uh, the question is, what is the force normal here? Um, what, what is R, the force normal here? So that is 700 newtons, which is the total that the person has there. The, the reason this question seems quite easy is because uh, most people get lost by the time they get to the last question, and so they usually get it wrong anyway because they, they're not sure what's going on anymore. But um, the person is sitting here, and so the total weight that they have is their upper body and what they're holding in their hands, uh, which is 280 newtons. So that gives a total of 700 newtons.